In today's video, we're talking about the lobotomy. Now, for me personally, this is one of the most horrible things I've ever come across. And I say that because in order to perform this procedure, you have to be willing to turn someone into a shell of themselves. You destroy their personality and their ability to make rational decisions. It's absolutely awful. But in order to understand this, we need to discuss the necessary anatomy of the region. We're gonna look at the mechanics of the procedure, and we'll even talk about what they would feel once the procedure was over. So it's gonna be an interesting one. Let's do this. So in order to best understand how this procedure worked, we first need to look at some of the essential anatomy of the cranium or the skull, because that's obviously what they had to go through in order to get to the brain. So in front of us, I have a real human skull. And as you look at it, you're gonna see a ton of interesting character in the bone itself. And it's also accumulated some damage. You can see it's missing part of the hard palate or uh, the maxilla bone and the ethmoid in here is essentially gone. But what I wanna focus on is going to be this frontal bone up here. And most people would refer to this as their forehead, but it's more than just the forehead because the frontal bone wraps around and forms the top part of your orbit or your eye socket. And up there, the bone is extremely thin. And that's the entire idea behind this type of lobotomy, the transorbital lobotomy. So what they used to do is take an ice pick and slip it above the eye. Now, I don't have an ice pick, I just have a probe, but if you can imagine it going above the eye and then hitting the top of this orbit at this really thin piece of bone. And it's kind of interesting, this cadaver uh, actually has a hole already up there. Um, it's likely not from a transorbital lobotomy, more than likely it's just because the bone is super thin and over years of handling it broke, but it does provide a pretty good visual. But as the probe, or ice pick rather, would go through this top part of the orbit, it would then enter into the neurocranium or the cranial vault where it would meet the brain. So let's go ahead and take a look at the brain to further explain this. So what you're looking at here is the right hemisphere of a female brain, and there is a lot to look at, so I wanna quickly orient you. Uh, right here we have the cerebellum, which is in, kind of in charge of just refining motor movement. We have the brain stem, uh, this aspect of it is called the medulla oblongata. Then we have the pons, the midbrain, and up here is a very important structure called the thalamus. Now the thalamus, uh, you can kind of think of it as a relay center. It's a hub of sorts that this entire region called the cerebrum is going to connect to, and then it's gonna send the signal to the proper place. Now, the, the idea behind the transorbital lobotomy is to sever the connection between the thalamus and this area here called the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is in charge of rational decision making and your personality. And in fact, it doesn't even fully develop until you're 25 years old. So what they would do is break through that orbital plate, which I'm obviously not going to puncture the brain here, but it would enter around this area. And then as it was in there, they would make a sharp 40 degree turn towards the midline. Again, the idea is to cut this, to sever the connection between this prefrontal cortex and the thalamus. By doing that, you render them inactive. They are deactivated as a person. So it's a horrible, horrible procedure. I can't believe, by the way, it was done as recently as the 1950s, which is another thing that is absolutely mind blowing to me. Now, what they would experience afterwards is if they didn't die, is everything from, uh, I guess you could say, stupor, confusion, rage. Uh, some of them would just, like I mentioned earlier, be a complete shell of themselves and just be vacant. I mean, it's, it's super, super depressing. So there was a wide variety of symptoms, but they did this to try and uh, to treat things as simple as depression, uh, psychosis that they, they deemed people had. Um, this was used a lot, I, uh, but I believe it was um, the correct numbers around 20,000 times or so in the United States alone, this procedure was performed. Absolutely ridiculous. But I hope you enjoyed this video as strange as it was. If you did, please let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see in future videos. Always be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in the next video.